Thank you again. I'm Dimitri Giannini's. I'm a former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors at the Ministry of Finance in Greece and former IMF staff for 16 years. What I would like to discuss today is 10 IMF best practices that have yet to be applied to the Greek program. I would admit that the slides are a bit dense, but this was done deliberately in the hope that those of you who will find the slides interesting can use them as reference. The presentation has two segments. Uh, first, we will go through some relevant background information that I believe ties in well uh, with the next section, the second section, the 10 IMF best practices yet to be applied to the Greek program. As a way of background, here is the IMF talking both to the world and to its own staff, defining its role as a trusted advisor and acknowledging that there are certain areas in its operations where a better job needs to be done. In the IMF's managing director's own words, first of all, the IMF has always has, has to be seen as a trusted advisor. When it comes to identifying areas where the, I needs, need, the IMF needs to improve its operations, uh, one area is the value added and the relevance of the fund advice. Furthermore, the IMF has acknowledged that there is also a problem when it comes to listening to views both within and outside the institution. The IMF has said that when it comes to the work of uh, the IMF departments, there is not effective cross-fertilization of views between departments when there are different views about a certain issue, and that the collaboration in setting priorities is not very effective. Here is an example, I believe, uh, for example, a case where one IMF department may be supporting the adoption of IPSAS by a certain country, yet the department in charge of the country, the department dealing directly with the country may have a different view and not have an IPSAS in, on the list of the top priorities, and that's a true case. Uh, furthermore, the IMF has also acknowledged that it has a problem listening and incorporating different views from outside the institution. Quite often, smart people from around the world have called on the IMF to look at a certain problem, at a certain issue, uh, from a different perspective, yet the IMF has not listened to these people. I would hope that this summit will have help uh, make a contribution in this regard. Uh, we all know that the IMF has been an important partner to Greece and a pillar of the Greek program, but few people realize how important Greece has become to the IMF. Greece is very important, not only because of the reputation the IMF has at stake, but also because Greece has become an important contributor to the IMF profitability. And I believe this table is instructive. In the first two columns, we have the revenue and the expenses of the IMF. By and large, the IMF is a profitable institution. There is an exemption here on the table in the series in 2008 at the onset of the global financial crisis. Staff travel went through the roof. I'm sorry about that. Cost increased and the IMF had a loss. But by and large, the IMF is a very profitable institution. What is interesting to see, however, is the contribution of Greece to the profitability of the IMF. During the six years of the Greek program, Greece has contributed over three and a half billion euros, close to four billion dollars in interest payments and fees to the IMF, to the IMF profitability. In one year alone, in 2014, more than half of the IMF's net operating income 
was based on Greece operations, on the operations in Greece. And if you look at the last column, this is a profit margin of the IMF, a hefty 71%. That's very impressive. Uh, not too bad, I would say. Who would not want to have a stake in a company that enjoys such a comfortable profit margin? If you look now, this profit margin is three to four times as much as the profit margin enjoyed by major investment banks, four times that of Goldman Sachs. Quite impressive, I would say. And if you look at net income per employee, this is roughly 10 times of that of the major investment banks. The point made here is that the IMF is obviously important to Greece, but at the same time, Greece has become important to the IMF and deserves the best the IMF has to provide. So here we come to the end of the background section. The two points made here is that the IMF has acknowledged that it needs to do a better job at listening to views inside and outside the institution and Greece is indeed very important to the IMF and deserves the best from the institution. During roughly the 70 years of the IMF's existence, the institution has developed a set of best practices. Those best practices are usually enshrined in IMF documents that have received the endorsement of the IMF's board of directors uh, what I will discuss is 10 of those best practices that are relevant to Greece and have yet to be applied to the Greek program. Here is a list, a summary of these 10 best practices yet to be applied to the Greek program. The first four deal with transparency and accountability and the remaining six deal with debt. There is a common thread, however. None of these best practices has been applied to the Greek program. As we move along with the presentation, you will see uh, repeated references to IMF documents. There is a comprehensive list of those references at the end of the slides. Um, I will now begin to discuss each one of them separately. Uh, for anyone who wishes to have a snapshot of these points can always refer to this slide. Best practice number one, make government financial transparency and accountability a top priority and produce a full balance sheet. Well, uh, the IMF considers transparency and accountability a top priority. In document after document of the IMF, a connection is being made between transparency and accountability and better performance. These are not selective quotes or phrases found in IMF documents. These are principles that lie at the center of the operation of the IMF. And if you consider that it was the lack of transparency that led to the eruption of the Greek crisis, one would have hoped that the IMF would, would, push in, would, would be pushing hard for Greece to improve transparency and accountability. Best practice number two emulate IMF use of IFRS for its financial statements. It's interesting to note that the IMF uses the international financial reporting standards to produce its uh, financial statements. These are the top standards in financial reporting in the world. Well, I believe Greece should mimic the example of the IMF. Best practice number three. Follow the IMF's 
Government Finance Statistics manual, manual recommendation to use IPSAS, IFRS, financial statements. Mind you, the IMF's GFSM, the Government Financial Statistics Manual, is the holy book of the IMF when it comes to government finance statistics. And the manual specifically says that countries should adopt IPSAS to improve decision making. Best practice number four, request IMF IPSAS technical support similar to other successful countries. Recognizing the importance of IPSAS, the IMF has been promoting the adoption of IPSAS across a range of countries. In fact, it has been providing technical assistance to countries to adopt and implement IPSAS and has been monitoring progress with IPSAS. And I find the absence of Greece from this list striking. Best practice number five, use IPSAS, IFRS, to correctly calculate Greek government debt burden metrics, which are much lower than peers and debt relief. In the case of Greece, the use of IPSAS to correctly calculate the debt burden and the debt service would reveal a striking fact that compared to peers, Greece's debt burden and annual debt service is a fraction of those of its peers. Paul, in his presentation, discussed extensively this subject, but I want to repeat it because I find it striking that this is a hidden truth and no one talks about, and the word has to come out. Greece's debt metrics in relation to its peers are only a fraction, less than half, of those of its peers. In fact, if you look at the last column, we have the amount of debt relief that Greece has received over the last six years because of the large amounts of loans in consensual terms. This is massive, massive debt relief, a massive multiple of that received by its peers. And I think that the continuation of the talk about the need for further debt relief it is, it is distracting from the real priority, the number one priority for Greece. The adoption of IPSAS that will promote transparency and accountability, build trust and confidence, and create the potential for massive investment that will provide a mega boost to the economy. Best practice number six, recognize present value of debt for measuring consensual financing. The IMF has been using the concept of net present value of debt when dealing with cases of consensual lending Greece has received massive amounts of loans in, in consensual terms. Uh, in addition, the IMF has a model that uses in cases of consensual lending, but has not applied this model in, in the case of the Greek program. Best practice number seven. Having admitted that future face value of debt is not meaningful, stop using for primary balance targets. I believe this is an important slide. It's one of the very few occasions that the IMF comes out publicly admitting that it has been using the wrong metrics. Uh, and these are relatively recent documents. Uh, first of all, the IMF has admitted that the debt to GDP ratio in the case of Greece is not a meaningful concept, and that the IMF should stop using the debt to GDP target based on the future value of debt and using this metric in defining targets for the program, such as the primary balance. Yet, it continues using this concept. Best practice number eight, 
use net debt in addition to gross debt as an important metric. The IMF staff guidance note uh, on conducting the debt sustainability analysis in market access countries strongly recommends, in fact it uses the word should, strongly recommends the use of net debt. We haven't seen it in the case of Greece. Best practice number nine, correctly calculate debt service and do not confuse it with gross financing needs. The IMF has been focusing on gross financing needs when everybody else has been focusing on debt service. However, as Paul mentioned, the bulk of what is in, the IMF includes in gross financing needs includes items such as uh, paying down arrears and building up cash buffers. The IMF should instead focus on what's more relevant, debt service as a percent of GDP, whereas Paul mentioned is an impressive 43% compared to that of Greece's peers. Best practice number 10. The IMF, the IMF is a signatory to the 2008 system of national accounts. The system of national accounts has been a joint undertaking of the United Nations, the OECD, the European Union, the IMF, and the World Bank. In fact, to, to, to underscore the importance of this exercise, the heads of those institutions have signed the document. Understand that the 2008 SNA provides debt rescheduling and refinancing rules harmonized with IPSAS IFRS. Well, the, the, the system of national accounts is essentially similar to IPSAS when it comes to debt refinancing, debt rescheduling. And the IMF has been an important contributor to the SNA. And one wonders why it has not applied the principles, those principles to the case of Greece. Here we come to the end of the presentation, uh, building on the key points of the background section and on the 10 IMF best practices. The message I want to convey is the following. The IMF has admitted it has to do a better job at listening to different views both from within and outside the institution. And Greece has been a very important partner uh, of the IMF. The IMF then should listen to calls that basically say that the number one priority for Greece should, should be the adoption of IPSIS, which will improve transparency and accountability, build trust and confidence and enable Greece create the potential to receive large amounts of investment that will kickstart an economy and in a good scenario, provide a mega boost to the economy. Here is a list of resource materials relating to the IMF 10 best practices. You can find this list in the summit material that will become available. Thank you very much. Yes, I will gladly take questions.